Christmas means all kinds of things to all kinds of people. I mean, when you think about Christmas, I don't know what you think about. I don't know if you think about family, if you think about food. I mean, in our house, we have special food for Christmas. We have chicken enchiladas and cheese enchiladas on Christmas Day. That's our deal. For breakfast, we have monkey bread. I mean, this is part of what we do on Christmas. I love those peanut butter cookies with the chocolate kiss in it. It's the only time of year that I have those. Christmas means all kinds of things. There's special music for it. There's the gifts. There's the presents. My mom and dad came in last night. And, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, cause y'all can say, wait, wait, there's mom and dad. And uh, they'd been there about five minutes and Amelia now. So I'm just, Nan and Papa, I'm so excited y'all are here to watch me open presents on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, Christmas means different things to all of us, right? I mean, it's just, it's just this, this, this special time of year. Now, I want to ask a series of questions this morning. So I'm going to ask some questions, and I'm not going to answer them. I'm going to just keep asking some questions. And then we're going to get to the point where we answer them and maybe uh, work our way backwards and then end at a spot. So... The first question that I want to ask this morning is, should Christians expect non-Christians to celebrate Christmas? No, I don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Christmas always, Christmas time always brings about controversy. I mean, as much as there is good about Christmas, Christmas, there's also the stuff that's not so good about Christmas, right? There's the pressure, and there's the hurry, and there's, there's the trying to get everything done, and, and, and there is just, there's just so much can be involved with Christmas. And it, usually every year we get a controversy or two about Christmas, right? And this year there was a controversy that came out a few weeks ago, and there's this whole deal about the red cup. Because Starbucks said that they were not going to do whatever their normal... I, honestly, I go to Starbucks all the time, and I just don't pay attention to the cup. I just drink what's in it. <laughs> but there was this whole controversy, and everybody's arguing back and forth, and, well, I can't believe they would do this, and da-da-da, and da-da-da. In my home state of Mississippi, in the University of Mississippi, they've, I've been having this thing called uh, the Grand Old Christmas for years and years and years. It's the big... Big deal on campus for students that student body puts on. Well, this year they changed the name from the grand old Christmas to a hotty toddy holiday. <laughs> now, can you imagine in Mississippi that that made the news? <laughs> that would kind of make the news. And all this argument over why would you change, why would you take Christmas? Here it is. There's people taking Christmas out of Christmas, right? And people get upset when people say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Or people get upset when kids call it winter break instead of Christmas vacation. And it can be so easily, we can get so easily offended about some of these things. And so I ask the question, as as a Christian, should we expect non-Christians to celebrate Christmas? But before we answer that question, I want to ask a different one. Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Now, when I ask that question, I'm not talking about should Christians have a Christmas tree. I have a Christmas tree in our house. We have one. Do you, who has a Christmas tree in their home? Everybody have, it's about everybody, right? We, we have Elf on the Shelf. We give presents. We, we do all of the things that are related to Christmas. So I'm not asking that. I'm asking, as a Christian, should I celebrate Christmas, should I celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th? But before we can answer that question, let's talk about December 25th as the birth of Jesus. How many of you in the room believe that Jesus was born on December 25th? Anybody raise your hand? We got one guy. He just is about to graduate from seminary, so maybe he's right. December 25th is the birth of Jesus. When we go back and look at where did this date come from, we don't really know exactly where it came from. There's a couple of different theories about why December 25th. There was a group of people, early church fathers, fathers, that believed that that Jesus was conceived 
and crucified on the same day. I have no, no idea of why they believe that, and they've got all their reasons for believing that. So when you believe that and you just calculate the months, then that would put Jesus being born sometime late December. The most popular theory, and again, we can't, we can't prove it because there's, there's, you know, it's, we can't find the documentation that says, hey, here's why this is this, is this way. The most popular reason for December 25th is a thing called Sol Invictus, which is in the Roman Empire was this giant holiday. And it was a holiday to celebrate the sun. Everybody can look right out there and see the sun, the S-U-N. And in this, this, this holiday, this Roman holiday, there was, there was another one that, that, that kind of went, coincided with it. And on this, this winter solace, our winter solace is um, Tuesday, December 22nd. And they would celebrate the, the shortest day of the year. And on that day, lots and lots of their gods were said to have been born on that day. And there's a lot of those gods, unless you're just a real historian and really into that. You're not going to know most of those gods, but you will recognize one of them, Hercules. The, 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 the god Hercules was born on that day. During this, this holiday, this festival, during this week, it was a, a, a week of total debauchery. Lots of drunken parties. All, they caroled. We, got our, we get, kind of get Christmas caroling from that. Oh, they caroled in a way that we would never carol because generally we're dressed when we go Christmas caroling. <laughs> And it was a week when slaves and owners would switch positions. And for four or five days, they would let the slaves be in charge. And it was all kinds of, of role-playing. And it was just a debauchery of a week. All in the celebration of the sun, S-U-N. So you have the early church. And you have Christianity being born. And this idea of who the Messiah is. And so the idea that we're going to celebrate... The birth of the Son, S-O-N, instead of S-U-N. And it was on December 25th, and that's where Christmas is introduced. So back to the question, should we as Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, the first place and the first thing that we should do is we should go to Scripture. And we should go to Scripture and say, where in Scripture does it command us to do this? It does not. There's nowhere in Scripture that commands us to celebrate the birth of Jesus. In fact, we have four Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who tell us the life of Jesus. Half of those Gospels don't even talk about the birth. John starts off talking about how Jesus has always been, and he's coming as the light of the world. And Mark just skips it all together and just kind of starts with the baptism of Jesus, starts when he's an adult. Matthew and Luke talk about the birth of Jesus, but to tell two entirely different stories. They don't tell stories that contradict each other. There's just the, the stuff that Matthew says, Luke doesn't bring up, and the stuff that Luke brings up, Matthew doesn't bring up. So to get the entire full Christmas story, we have to put those two things together. And as a result, we create what many of you have in your house as a nativity scene. And if the wise men are there, it's incorrect. We're not commanded to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So like, man, Marty, this is such a downer on a Christmas day. We just sang, come home for Christmas, for crying out loud. <laughs> but we're not commanded to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We're commanded to celebrate his death and his resurrection, but not his birth. Half the Gospels don't even mention his birth. No apostle talks about it. The early church, there is no hint whatsoever of the early church celebrating the birth of Jesus. In fact, Christmas is not mentioned in any writings of the early church fathers until A.D. 324. So about 300 years after the life and time that Jesus was on the planet is this beginning to be introduced. In fact, in the United States, anybody, everybody remember Abraham Lincoln? He was kind of important, wasn't he? He's kind of an important president. You realize that uh, when Abraham Lincoln was the president of the United States, that Christmas was not an official holiday. It wasn't until President Grant made it a national holiday in 1870. So even as a na even in our our, our our Christian nation that we're built on the you know all of this stuff that a lot of us say a lot of times, the first hundred years or so of our country, we didn't even have Christmas as a holiday. The Christmas 
that a lot of us know when we think of, of, of the, the vision of Santa, Coca-Cola, ad campaign, 1930s. Most of us that associate with Christmas music, we can thank the 50s for that and the Rat Pack, Bing Crosby and those guys. This, this, this is the stuff that we associate. And when you think about it in the history of mankind and the history, even the history of Christianity being 2,000 years old, it's just not that. It's just not old. This is just not something that's been around for a long time. So should we, as Christians, celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, I say emphatically, yes. Absolutely, we should celebrate the birth of Jesus. Because the birth of Jesus changed everything. Everything. The fact that the, that the creator of all of the universe would say, I'm going to go be a human so that, I, that not, so that I can go to the cross, so that I can take care of our pending death problem. The fact that, that God says, yes, I'm going to go be this Messiah, the fact that the Messiah is born, is this something that we're supposed to celebrate? Absolutely. We also should celebrate his life. And we also should celebrate his death and his burial and his resurrection and his ascension and his return. We're supposed to celebrate all of those things. Now what happens is a lot of time in church culture, church Christians, not not convictional Christians, but church Christians, we will celebrate Christmas and we'll celebrate Christmas. Easter, but we don't celebrate his life. We don't ever celebrate. Have we ever been to a church where you celebrated the ascension of Jesus? No. <laughs> it was a pretty big deal. <laughs> if we think go- coming to earth was a big deal, what do you think the return to heaven was like? Now that's a party I want to go to. <laughs> that, that. We're supposed to celebrate all of those things in every aspect of our life, every day that I live, living the truth of Jesus in every day day life. Jesus was born. He lived the perfect life. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He rose again. He ascended, and he promised to return again. I'm supposed to be celebrating all of those things on a daily basis, and you're supposed to be celebrating those things on a daily basis. So when my youngest daughter, Amelia, wants to play Christmas music in July, we should celebrate that. Even though it's 112 degrees, <laughs> feels nothing like Christmas, and the Christmas music is blaring all over the swimming pool. This is what we should do, because we should celebrate Christmas all the time. Now, obviously, we need important days, right? We need set-aside days. We need days to celebrate. That's where birthdays come from. That's why we have anniversaries. That's why we have Sunday. It's a day that we set aside. So we absolutely should celebrate the birth of Jesus, but not just for one season, not just for one day, but for every day along with all of the other things that we should celebrate. So should I expect a non-believer to celebrate my religious holiday? Now this one gets a little bit more sticky, doesn't it? Now it's not sticky if you proclaim to be a Christian... There's no way you would ever celebrate an Islamic holiday. Wouldn't do it. In fact, I, I, I'm a big Survivor fan. Anybody Survivor fans? I'm a big Survivor fan. I've been watching it from season one. And, and this, this past season that just ended, um, there was this one reward challenge where they got to go. And part of the reward challenge is they get food because that's a big deal when you're on an island and you haven't eaten anything in, in three weeks. But they got to go to this temple were these um, Buddhist monks. And part of the reward was they were going to go through this ceremony and they were going to be blessed by the monks. And so as I'm watching it, 
I'm going, because I always watch Survivor thinking like, what would it be like if I was on Survivor? And how it would be dominating, you know, everything. <laughs> and I thought, okay, because I would have won the reward. So I would, so what would I do? There's no way. I, I, I could not sit there and allow a monk to bless me. I couldn't. Now, that's not, that's not a disrespectful thing. That's just, that's, that is because of my conviction. So I cannot do that. So I would never celebrate the holiday of a religion I didn't believe. This makes sense, right? There's not anybody in the room going to argue with me on that one. So as Christians, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. But we, we don't need to demand from someone who's not a believer that they should say Merry Christmas. Nor should we get offended if it's not on the cup. Because if they said happy something else that was a cult-following holiday. Yeah, see how that works? See how that works? Because really, as Christians, we should not be offended. Do you realize this? Do you realize that as a follower of Jesus, you should be one of the least offendable per people on the planet? It should, you should not be offended. When we look at the life of Jesus, and we celebrate his birth, and we know the humble means in which he was, which he was born, and we'll celebrate that on Thursday. And then you look, at, you look at his life part. There was times when Jesus got frustrated. There was times when Jesus got aggravated. We know a time when Jesus got so angry, he made a whip. And it was about the church not being a place of worship and prayer. But you know one, play, one thing you'll never find in the life of Jesus in the Gospels? When Jesus was ever offended. Now, the religious people were constantly offended by Jesus. But Jesus was never offended by people. So when someone says to you, Happy Holidays, don't be offended. Be heartbroken. Don't be offended that they don't want to, they just want it to be a red cup. Be heartbroken that millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people do not know that Jesus is the Messiah. So should I expect a non-believer to celebrate the birth of Christ when I'm not even commanded as a Christian to celebrate it? No, I should not. God doesn't force himself on anyone. Jesus never forced himself on anyone. Why should you? Why should I? So there's times when I know people and I know they're not a believers. I will on purpose tell them happy holidays. I will not say Merry Christmas. Out of respect for what they believe or what they don't believe. So should we expect non-believers to celebrate Christmas? I say no. Should we as Christians celebrate Christmas? Absolutely yes. Do we realize that it wasn't on December 25th? Yeah. There's a couple of reasons why we know it wasn't on December 25th. One is the Christmas story in Luke. Where were the shepherds? Well, outside doesn't really clear it up. <laughs> That's kind of vague. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't say in Luke 2. The shepherds were outside. They were what? They were sleeping in the fields. Shepherds don't take their sheep into the fields during... Winter, okay? Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem. They have to tra travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That's, ki that's kind of like us going from here to, to Pahrump. That's not a big deal, unless you have to walk. 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> then it becomes a really long trip, all right? And very dangerous. Travel. One of the reasons that we still pray today, when you pray for somebody on the trip, you'll pray for what? Traveling mercies. You know where that comes from? It used to be traveling was the most dangerous thing you would ever do. Not because of a traffic accident, but because you would get robbed. You get killed. You get kidnapped. It was a really dangerous thing to leave the confines of your village. So this great census that was out by Caesar for all the people, and then what did they have to do? We know this from the Christmas story. What They had to go what? They had to return to their home. So you have all of, the, all of these people traveling. And guess when you would never travel? Winter. Most, most theologians will say that Jesus was either born in May or September. I like September since I was born in September. <laughs> most will say September, uh, just based on the, the way everything would have laid out in history and those kinds of things. But are we as Christians supposed to celebrate the birth of Jesus? Absolutely, even though we're not commanded to. And are we expe- or should we expect non-believers to celebrate our holiday? No. So here, here's, here's my challenge to you this morning. Instead of being offended when something's not on the cup, instead of being offended when they change the name from a grand old Christmas to a hotty toddy, hotty toddy holiday, instead of getting offended when someone calls it winter break, Instead of getting offended when someone says happy holidays, what if your heart ached for their salvation? Wouldn't that change things? I'm going to give you a challenge, another challenge that I think you're going to find difficult in the next four to five days. When given the opportunity to say Merry Christmas, instead of saying Merry Christmas, say, My Savior is born. Now, sitting in church on Sunday morning, that sounds like a really easy thing to do. Doesn't it? Sure. Last night I went to the grocery store. Checking out. Knew what the sermon was going to be out today. I mean, I actually do think about it beforehand. Some Sundays it may not seem like that, but I actually do <laughs> kind of plan this ahead. So I knew I was going to give this challenge this morning. And as I'm checking out and as I'm carrying my bags out, guess what the grocery store clerk at Smith says? No. In fact, I find that most people say Merry Christmas. And you know what I did? took the easy way and said Merry Christmas back. Because after all, telling someone Merry Christmas is probably going to save their life, isn't it? I mean, telling somebody Merry Christmas is really going to introduce them to who Jesus is. I mean, saying Merry Christmas to somebody is really going to change their eternity. No. So that's a challenge. Instead of Merry Christmas, say, yes, my Savior is born. And you probably will get a strange look, or maybe you'll get a question. Maybe you'll get an opportunity to share your faith, which means for most of us, we'll choose to say, Merry Christmas. Would you pray with me? Father God, we celebrate the fact that you love us. You love us even when we don't deserve it. You love us even when we don't love you back. You love us even when we don't believe in you. And Father, we do celebrate the fact that you chose to become a man. And that you chose to take on human flesh and all of the things that it means to be human to the point that you showed us that you were born a helpless baby in a foreign city 
to young, very poor parents. Father, we know that you could have entered the world in a whole different way. But you chose the humbleness of a baby. You chose to be the son of a carpenter and to work hard with your hands and have brothers and sisters Father, we are so thankful for that. Because while it is so important to celebrate your birth, and it's so important to celebrate your death and your burial, but it is the resurrection. And the reason that you were able to be resurrected is because your life was sinless. And that sacrifice covers our sin and our shame. That sacrifice covers us when we don't even have the guts to say Merry Christmas and we just say Happy Holidays. Father, challenge us. Challenge us as we go through the Christmas season. Challenge us as we go through wrapping presents and hanging out with family and friends and and turning up the radio when Please Come Home from Christmas comes on. And every aspect of it, we want to celebrate that, all of the good things that you've given and the life that you've given and the way that you allow us to live. But may you burn in our hearts and burn on our souls that the reason Christmas is to be celebrated It's because our Messiah, because our Savior, was born. Father, may your blessings be on us as we go through our days. And may you gather us back on this Christmas Eve to worship you and to sing Silent Night and to hear the Christmas story. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken. All returned to their own ancient towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to him, to her child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night when the shepherds were staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened, what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just as the angels told them. Father, as we go about our days, may we know that a Savior has been born. And may we live and speak accordingly. In your name we pray. Amen.